Hello everyone and welcome back to Victoria 2 The Divergences of Darkness So, um, last time we played, I believe, we had puppeted Egypt it was the last thing we did um, They are now, you know, our puppet um, I don't think they show up on the Sphere of Influence map Because technically we don't own them But I think now, uh, what am I at to? 13 Infamy I think now is the time to push on to colonizing northern India. Oh, and I can actually colonize southern India as well now. So, I was looking up, or I was thinking about taking over Baroda to firmly capture this and then push inward to the uh, Indian interior once I had done that. So, uh, let's let our infamy drop a little bit more because I think it's like 15 to yeah it's 15 I'd be over the thing if it did the full 15 so our economy dropped why is the economy dropping oh we're good I, okay. I don't know why uh, in this game, though, uh, when this game starts, every time it starts, like if you stop it and you restart it, the economy tanks for every world nation, and then it comes back. So I don't, I don't know. So I can just, I can reduce that again. Down to 30%. I actually can probably drop it to 27. That's probably good. Keep it steady. We're making money. So the major thing that's happening in Europe right now is the battle for Germany. Um, it looks like the Danubian Confederation, which is based in Austria, oh, the seven frames, uh, which is based in uh, Vienna, based in Austria, they're allied with me. Um, they've defeated Bohemia, and now they've turned their their attention to towards Burgundy. Which is good. The weakening, weakening of the Burgundians will prove useful for me. Um, it looks like the Burgundians are actually being defeated on multiple fronts. Which is good. The Germans uh, should definitely establish a state. Uh, I'm actually going to also give them war subsidies to kind of you know, negate the cost of their war. Because I'm using this actually as a proxy war against Burgundy. I'm funding an ally so that they can defeat uh, the Burgundian menace, if you'd be so kind to call them that. Burgundy wants... no, declined. Declined Burgundy. I am I am sorry, but we, we cannot. Cannot. Not in my best interest. So. Let us... Let's see, where do I want to move this army? Probably on top of this army. This 24,000 man army. Let's give them more cav and more cannon. So I think I have like 80,000 men roughly in the Suez alone. Or in, you know, the Sinai. So I think once this is down for the no. Oh. Far enough, excuse me. Further enough, far enough. Uh, we'll turn our attention to conquering parts of India. Uh, the I think the hardest conquest and all is going to be either Punjab or it's going to be the Mughals because they're large. Uh, Vijayanagar has only got 37 military power. Their entire army is about the size of my army of India. Uh, Punjab has zero army. And the Mughals have 38. Uh, and even Bengal, who is a civilized nation, their army is only 37. Because they have just recently westernized. So they are only barely westernized. I could probably declare war and conquer most of Bengal as well. So, just to establish myself in India more. To conquer India. India. I'll 
I'll probably fight a war with the Afghans as well. I think last time I played, I talked about um, the basically the conquest of Newfoundlander, which are I believe they're Boers, right? Yeah, of Newfoundlander, which is like the Dutch Southern Republics, along with um, Griekenland and uh, Transkap and uh, Li Liuwin. And basically to conquer all these, uh, you know, southern Boer territories and create a, um, like, once you conquer them to create, you know, I believe it's the Duchy of the Cape. Right? Yeah. You conquer it and create the Duchy of the Cape. So this entire southern piece of Africa is under, you know, my control. Good, the Spanish want an alliance. Good. Brings two of the world's largest colonial powers into another alliance. So the seven republics are dead. They are collapsing. They have slavery in their northern states, actually. And uh, as they collapse, Plantagia, what, I think is a first world power? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, Plantagia is uh, probably the victor in the new world. They're also allied with Chinchu. Well, the Japanese even have uh, some presence. Hawaii. Tuitunga. Little nation of Tuitunga. Their capital is Tonga. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Tonga. I think that'd be cool. Because then from Tonga you can, like, or to Fiji, and then you take a, a flight to like New Zealand. Can I colonize this? Oh, I'm not close. I don't have a naval base close enough. Okay. Well, let's put it. At, let's make a naval base in Kojan. Oh, I'll make a naval base and hopefully I can colonize these guys. Ataroa. They don't have any army at all. Meanwhile, China is collapsing. Or China is just in a state of upheaval. The Japanese have actually declared war on the Manchu. I wonder what they want. Whoa. Damn. Outer Manchuria. The Algwen region. And they demand it. Nivik? Nivik. Well, let's see where these places are. Outer Manchuria. Okay. The Algwen region. And Nivik. So they want this expanse of like China slash Siberia like all that and the Japanese are probably gonna get it the Manchu are collapsing so the Japanese are gonna have a formidable formidable united empire here in uh, in Siberia slash Asia and there's no one to challenge them really um, there's no one to challenge the might of the Japanese armies and the Imperial Japanese Navy and uh, I can't ally with them. So. You know, it might be easier than to conquer Bengal to puppet Bengal. You know, if they ever get unruly, just puppet state them. So let's see. I don't think I could take Punjab in one fell swoop. Yeah, I couldn't because they have four different regions. So, it might be easier to seize Baroda first. And then when I move on to my war with with Punjab, you just demand uh, concessions. Unless, is there like a... Uh... No, there is no, like, make protectorate or something. I forget what it's... What's it called? I think it is it's called make a protectorate. Establish protectorate, yeah. So, I think I'm... No, a little bit more and I'll be good. I don't I know I you usually don't incur like the plus fifteen or the whatever, the minus fifteen for the uh, thing, but surprisingly enough, the Danubian Confederation is actually holding its own. 
which is good. It's good. The fleet of the English crown. Hail Britannia. Britannia save or Britannia rules the waves. Which is not entirely true. I think Aragon has the largest navy in the game. Like, can I check that individually? Like, naval stat? I mean, I could probably could. I have the largest army in the game. Burgundy a close second. Might be the Spanish. The Spanish have a massive navy. Like, 99... I think that, yeah, 99 ships. I think Aragon had, like, 120. And, uh, Burgundy's got a formidable navy as well. It might be the Spanish. The Spanish might have the largest navy in the world. Which is, you know, completely understandable. Especially because of their sprawling colonial empire they have. I'm just trying to boost my navy. My navy's actually pretty big, right? I have a, a fleet here. I don't know what fleet this is. That's my second fleet. That's 20 ships. I have 32 ships here. Or 43 ships here. I got another fleet of 29. I think this is a transport fleet. And then I have an Indian Navy, don't I? Somewhere. Yeah, here. In Cilion. I'm actually going to move these guys to Karachi. Build a naval base there. Oh, let's see if our naval base is done here. No, not even close. Okay. We're done. Good game. Uh, need to get at some point. Well, I need to get at some point. Establishing a penal colony. Um, sure. Why not? I mean, Australia was a penal colony for 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 Britain. So. Do, 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 do. So, update on the D&D &D game. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to record it just because there's so many elements of it that I'd have to record. But I am looking into it, so if, if it does happen, you, know, you, you guys will be the first to know. But we played on Sunday, and uh, uh, I, but we only have one new or we had one returning character. Um... The character's name is Rosetta. She uh, was in the trial run and uh, level didn't level up uh, on the trial run, but level up this time. And um, so yeah, uh, we had a returning character and we had two new characters. One of the new characters was a dwarven fighter, and then we had a homebrew character, which I, I believe he's an alien or something. But uh, they all played. And uh, their their quest uh, was to find some uh, deserters because in the world I've set up, there is a war happening, and the uh, the town. Um, oh no! Oh no! We will press our claim. What do I get? Gain one infamy. I just got rid of one infamy. I'm never going to be able to, like, create Italy. Ooh, Savoy rebelled, and the Republican Party is now in power. Republican Savoy. Okay, but, uh, yeah, they were to find some deserters, and the deserters were rumored to be in, like, uh, in the south on a southern, in a southern forest. So they go south, and, uh, for their, you know, you, you camp out on the way, because it's like a day and a half away. So they camp out, and at night they roll an encounter, and the encounter just happened to be four bandits. And uh, our brave dwarven fighter uh, was knocked down to, I think he was knocked down to negative two health points. Failed, uh, or no, he failed three death saving throws and bled to death, which is sad. But uh, he died. And... Um, it was just like, like, oh, like, we had a character die. 
like legitly in our in this run through not not the first run through where everybody it was a complete team wipe but um yeah so we had we had one character die and then the other two lived they got to the town and they uh they they were killed or they, they didn't die they uh they lived but there were some cultists that were ripped apart by the uh by a werebear <laughs> and uh in the end, they ended up killing a werebear and coming home and living. So, well done for them. Uh, a sad day <laughs> that our dwarven fighter was, was bled to death. Uh, but it happens, I suppose. So, yeah. So, we had a lot of fun. Uh, I believe we're playing again on Sunday. Um, I have two quests for them. Uh, one of them, uh, since I know none of the people... Uh, that I play with watch any of these videos. Uh, the one quest for them is delving into a haunted burrow in search of some people that have gone missing and uh, they might find some interesting stuff there. And then they have another one which is find out what has been killing and stealing cattle I believe from some northern some northern town. Um... And that one, that one takes them into the mountains of the far north. So they're 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 gonna run into some strange shit up there. That's for sure. Some some crazy monsters, some crazy animals, that only kind of spawn in the north. Like they have a, a higher chance of uh, spawning in the north. Like in the north north, like cold, frozen. Think of like Skyrim north, like that. Um, so yeah, there's more of a chance of like crazy stuff spawning. So. That'll be fun. Um, we might. Last week we only had three people play. One of them, one of them bailed. Oh my god, this table keeps making cracking noises every time I put my arm on it. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Turkey. I will not back you. But uh, we had three people play last time. No, I don't care, Serbia. And um, yeah, I have too good of a relations with Turkey to like. Like, jump in on that right now. But yeah, we only had three people play. This weekend, if we're lucky, we're going to have five people playing. So it's going to be insane. There's going to be a lot of shit that's going down. Um, and I think that makes it more fun. Like, the more people you add, usually the more fun it becomes. Uh, because of the player interaction. Um, both people... Or both uh, the f the few people that we had playing, only one of them like really super like gets into it and is like role playing like ninety five percent of the time. Uh, the other people are just like, you know, they 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 talk in like their character's voice or whatever. They role play as their character in specific points, which is fine. It all depends on how you role play. But um, yeah, one of our <laughs> the guy that always role plays. Um, he uh, he was he was complaining because he was like I'm basically playing a game I'm playing a uh, a role play game with just me like just just me no one else so but uh, I think it'll be fine did they lose that war oh my god they did I'll increase my relations with them ooh Navara yeah new royal marriage with the Navarese are in my sphere but are a satellite of Aragon but yeah so that should be fun um, if we have all fe five people playing it'll be really crazy um, I'll let you know I'm starting to I'm starting to thinking of doing like D&D &D, um, like storytelling for you guys like I've been recording um, like week one in week two, so I might do like three weeks and record the video so you guys can like, or not record the video, but kind of like tell the story like, oh, there were, there were three people and they came into this town and kind of give you the whole spiel and layout of the game uh, instead of recording it because uh, it's just, Fraps only likes to record one thing at a time. So, like, when I record a game, Fraps only records the game. It usually doesn't record, like, Skype behind it or, uh, you know, stuff like that. I know it can. 
And uh, I know Fraps can record web pages as well, because what we play on is Roll20. So I have to fuck around with it and see if it works. And if it does work, and it, you know, because I use Audacity to record me personally. Um, so my audio isn't the issue. The issue is the other people's audios and the Roll20 that needs to be recorded. I bet I could figure it out and do it. Um, I might give it a trial run on Sunday, I think. Um, so I might give it a trial run on Sunday. And I might record it. And if I if, it, if the recording comes out well, I will put it up so you guys can see it. Because I think you guys will enjoy it as much as I enjoy it. DMing and having fun with it. Um, I think you guys will have have some fun listening to it and, you know, watching our reactions. I will have my camera set up, uh, so you guys will be like, well, we can see what Froman looks like. But, um, I'll have the camera set up so you guys can see it. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So you, yeah, you guys can see it, can see me. I don't know if anyone else is going to have their camera on. Uh, so yeah. So that's the plan for Sunday. Uh, I'm probably going to test it as soon as I'm done recording this. Uh, to see if I can record Roll20 and uh, Skype and uh, all that shit all at the same time. I'll probably have to have someone help me with it. But, um, yeah. But, yeah, that's what's coming up on Sunday. So be excited for next week for recording. I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, if I have to chop it up for... If I have to chop it up into, like, five pieces... Uh, I'll upload one piece every day type deal, maybe two a day, uh, depending on how everything works out. And, uh, yeah, you guys will get to see the stupid, crazy, ridiculous stuff. You'll also get to see all the GM rolls, um, uh, that happen. So, yeah, you'll get to see all the fun GM rolls. And, you yeah. know. That's always fun. They're like, like, oh, he rolled a 20. Let's see what happens. Like that type of shit. So. I also have to see how... Uh, I think I'm doing criticals wrong. Like, if you roll a 20, you crit someone. Which means they get, like, double damage. I, th I forget how crit works. I don't remember. Um, so, I'm going to... God, this fucking table. But I'm going to... Uh, look up on the internet how rolling crit works i forget we figured out how to do advantage and disadvantage uh last game so i'm gonna roll i'm gonna go and see if i can get crit to work how i can get crit to work because i crit is automatically like a bonus damage like i forget how what the bonus damage is though i don't know if it's like an extra plus 10 or like a plus five i think i've been rolling it as a plus five recently so if that's the case, and it's plus 10, uh, my monsters will hit way harder than they've been hitting. So, you know, keep that in mind. But uh, I have to go and look it up, because I'm not 100% sure, and I'm still new to, to, to GMing or DMing, whatever one you guys prefer. Um, but yeah. So that'll be fun. Uh... I kind of have like a story set up for the dungeon, the Burrows dungeon that they're going to be doing. It's not more, like it's kind of more set PC than the other ones, but not not set PC, if that makes sense. If you guys know what I'm talking about. Like it is and it isn't. Like it's a set piece and like there are specific things that happen in there. It's not completely random, but at the same time it's not set PC because if they don't do it then it doesn't happen type deal. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, you have to do this or you break the storyline. No, I'm, I'm not doing anything like that. I mean, there are people that play D&D &D like that. Like, like you have to play, the DM has a set of, you know, things that are going to happen and you must do these. Yeah, I don't play like that. It's, I, I like the randomness of the game. I like the, the randomness and the stupidity that happens in the game. It's just like, oh shit, well, here's a 10 stone giants. What do you do? Like, that's, that's what's fun about that. Oh, wow. Massive rebellion. Okay, cool. I'll just siege this province. It's okay. Wow. 
Well, what a time for a rebellion to spring up. Oh, hi, rebels. Slaughter the rebels for them. Yeah. Okay, these are just to a pop. I'm not too worried about them. Oh, it's a slaughterhouse. It's a massacre. But yeah, if you guys don't like, uh... If you guys are like, D&D, that's super nerd shit. Like, just... If, it, if and when it goes up... Just go and watch the first episode. I guarantee a lot of you will enjoy it. Just because of the stupid shit and the player interaction with the monsters and the st stuff that happens in the game. And I'm sure that you guys will enjoy the hell out of it. I mean, I'm, I'm super certain that a lot of you are like, oh, it's stupid. That's what I thought. Like, oh, you, have, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, that's ultra nerd stuff. No, it's... It's just, it, for people that like role-playing, and for, like, getting into a character and a super good story, you know, that, that's, that's, this is what's for you, so. And I encourage you guys, if you, if you have a group of friends that are, like, nerdy, and like playing, like, nerd games, like, play some, like, approach it, and be like, yo, what if you... What if you, you you don't have to call it D and D. You can call it role playing because that's what it is. It's 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 a role playing. Like you play as an elf or an a orc or you know insert the you know fantasy race playing as, and you know you play. So so try it out. Watch it on the internet. Check it out because there's a lot of fun shit that happens and it makes makes everything so much more enjoyable uh, when stupid shit happens. It, it makes it so much fun. It's like, oh, you were just eaten. What do you do? <laughs> that type of stupid shit. And for any of you that come here for just like, like pure Victoria 2 gameplay. You know, I apologize if what I'm talking about is really stupid. Oh, you're not paying attention to the game. I am paying attention to the game. I know exactly what's happening. <laughs> like, like, we're just invading a small third world country that no one cares about. And they've all allied together to fight me, and their armies are nowhere near the match of my one solitary army. Like, we're crushing these guys. This is an easy war. We also have a contentious election coming up, which which is nice. Not really. It's kind of shitty, but it's whatever. My army of India. What do I need to build the Suez? While I'm thinking about the game. Oh, here we go. Fraternity. We need counter-revolution. Best, uh... Oh, we could do unity. Embrace the ideal of unity. Unity is a good one. Alright, here we go. Steam turbine. Okay. So we need the steam turbine. So how's this war going? Are we completely destroying them? Uh, let people have their faith. Oh yeah, we're we're kicking their ass. Doing real well, chasing their armies all over the place. We're blockading their two remaining ports. See, there's a trick for the AI in uh, Paradox Games. Is if you don't click on the province they're going to sometimes, like they're in sometimes, if you click past it to the next province, they won't run away because the AI doesn't register that you're coming at them. So, like, watch. See, he's going that way. If I go here, like, hold on. Uh, like if I do, if I go up here. Well, he's running away, I guess, because he's small. But, uh, can I just annex these guys? Jasimilar? Can I add Wargol? Establish Protectorate? And that's another 15 straight up. Damn it. We'll chase this guy down. He's in the, in the Kelat. Let's ignore him. See, now he's going to have to siege it all down again. And it's going to take them longer to capture it. I won't go take over their entire nation. 
But yeah, that's the end of my D&D spiel, rant, whatever. It's a game I just, I love playing. Love playing, probably. We're probably, I've been thinking about doing a, um, like a space roleplay. I know, just after I said I was done with the, uh, the D&D rant. But, um, but yeah, we, I've, I've been thinking about it. I don't know how I would do it, per se. Um, but I've been thinking about it. Like, like, like maybe once I'm, like, competent at GMing. Uh, we can do like a space D and D. That would probably be a lot of fun. That would probably be a lot of fun, like a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Actually, I have very few Sunnis and very few Hindus. For all the land we own in India, we have very few. But yeah. So I've been thinking about it. I don't know uh, how to do it per se. I don't know if it's like how to do it or just like what to do maybe or how to approach it maybe that's the right it's like how to approach it is probably the right way of thinking about it like how would I approach space D&D like what would I do what would what's happening in the universe because because like you can still have your basic classes as like healer or something but you have to pull the stats from somewhere else So, yeah, well, just, it's like, it's more like pulling the stats from somewhere else. So, or I mean, I could make up my own stats, but that's, it's like, eh, you know, like, um, eh. sure, Iraq. I mean, I don't know, who are you fighting? They're fighting Turkey. Ha, huh. ha, huh. I hope the Turks crush you. Turks still won't ally with me, they don't like me. Actually, I don't even know. Let's not influence the Turks. Let's uh, increase my relations with them, though. As I'm slowly conquering Baroda, there's nothing its allies can do to save. But yeah. But yeah, I know nothing of, of British politics. I know who your prime minister is, but that's it. What's funny is I can't even remember the British prime minister's name right now. Or like the uh, UK's prime minister. I can't remember his name for the life of me right now. I don't know why. So thanks, look at that. Anglo-French Hindustan. Finally on the map. Parliamentary monarchy. Who were they before? They're just a straight absolute monarch? I can't remember in all honesty. David Cameron, that's his name. Damn, I don't know why I fucking forgot his name. Don't know why I forgot his name. Prime Minister of the UK. 
so we're going to go to... Fuck you, Aragon. We're going to go back to Karachi. What do I need to construct Italy? Savoy. Savoy exists. Is in the dual monarchy sphere of influence on embassy and chambellery. So, oh, Savoy is not at peace? Huh? Who are you at war with? They are at peace. I think my game's just bugged. What the hell? You don't want to be my ally anymore? Probably I have too many great power allies. Whoa. Wow. Bohemia is fighting alone. Against the Scandian Scandinavian superpower. So let's see. Who's on the great empires list? The great power list. So you have the dual monarchy of England and France. You have Burgundy. You have Bohemia, the Holy Roman Emperor. You have Scandinavia, the Scandinavian, the unified... Scandinavian territories. You have Aragon, Kingdom of Aragon. You have the Japanese Empire. You have the Denobian Confederation. You have Venice. Hmm. Maybe Venice will unite Italy, and I won't have to worry about it. Colonial policy debated. Uh. Let's let's just gain liberals in the upper house because there's so few of them. Just help them out. Help them out a little bit. I could satellite a bunch of nations, but I'm not going to do that. Like I could re I could release Belfast as a three province, four province, four province minor in Northern Ireland. Why would I do that? Like, <laughs> like when I could release Ireland as a whole. Clipper boom. I can establish a naval school. Research points modifier plus five. Hell yeah. yeah. But yeah. So let's see, who should I declare war on next? Burgundy, no. Man, they really don't like me, I bet. <laughs> Actually, they're, they're kind of impartial to me. They really don't care. What, whatever, the fall, the loss of Bohemia is not, like, it's not really a loss. Like, I don't, I don't care. They're not my ally. You know, and they're collapsed by the other great powers of the regions in the region. Just means that uh, the German states can, at one point, may unify themselves. Look at Novgorod. Look at Sabir. Get rid of the ringleaders. Oh my god, look at the Japanese. Holy shit. Holy shit. They conquered all of that. The Manchu now exist within China. The ancestral Manchu homelands have been conquered by the Japanese. Damn. Chinchu. One of the only... Like, republics... That is the only Chinese republic that's, like, not in the mainland and being destroyed by great powers. Like, we're digging into India. Like, we're carving up slices here. We're taking our, our fair share. But, I think I'm going to end this part here for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't like to, or please don't like to, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh. Hold on. Hold the phone. Tibet. The fall of Daxi. When the empire of the Ming dynasty shattered in 1760, dozens of local states emerged. The second era of warring states started 
After 70 years of fighting, only five powers remained in former Ming lands. Ming itself, having managed to rise from the ashes, Shun and Daxi, two dynasties founded by a peasant leader, and the heavenly kingdom of Taiping, a country on a holy crusade to purify China. And Tung Nyung, a maritime federation with a lively trade with the West. All these countries have claimed the mandate of heaven, and now another has fallen, the Daxi Empire. So China is down to four. So, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate it quite a bit. It helps me out. It helps the channel out. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people would appreciate it as well. So, until next time, stay tuned.